Now I'm just sharpening up a pencil here because I'm just about to draw the Total Boat Sport Dory on a drawing board. But before I get involved with that, I'd kind of like to show you numbers of sets of plans that I've been looking at and it's been helping me make some decisions about what I'd like to do with my dory. You know, there's nothing, you know, wrong with these plans or anything, but everybody's an individual and I'm going to do things the way I want to do them. And uh, I don't want a big dory. We're going to build kind of a small dory so that it can be handled by one man. But like I say, before we get involved in drawing it, which would be the first video of a 36 video series on the building of that boat, I'd kind of like to first show you some of these plans and show you kind of where I get some of my ideas and uh, my thought pattern on what's made me decide to design the dory that I'm going to build. Now that dory has been designed already really in my head, so all I have to do is really put it on paper and then build it. So let's take a look at some of these plans right here. Now, like I said, we've got numbers of sets of drawings in front of us here of different dories. And uh, we've blown them all up to a certain size. They're all the same size. Uh, they fit the one inch to the foot scale right now. We had to do that really with a photo and larger. But uh, we've got it accomplished and here they are. They're all on the same scale. And it's funny because when you look at draw lines drawings like this, you can tell that all these dories, uh, even though they're all dories and all referred to really as Swampskit style dories, they're all different shapes. They're different lengths, different widths, they've got different shear lines, different rocker to the bottom, all kinds of things are different. The way they're planked, some of them have got four planks on a side, some of them have got five. You know, like I said, there's just numbers of different things, and there's different ways to describe the shape of dories that uh, I would like to show people how to do. Now, a lot of people would say a dory like this particular dory right here has got quite a bit of a shear in it, and I've measured the shear. It's nine inches. There's nine inches of shear in this particular dory, and I, I don't think that's excessive or anything like that. And it's got a very conservatively shaped bottom to it in rocker got a slight rocker to the bottom and uh, one of the reasons why they have a rocker at all is so that when you land one on the beach you can spin it around on the beach without dragging the two ends. Uh, the more rocker you put in it the easier it is for you to right the boat in direction like if you're in lumpy seas and different things I would probably consider a little bit more rocker than this in the boat that I'm going to design but like I said, I'm just looking at these drawings and kind of getting ideas. I'm not going to steal anything from any one of them. The drawings that I do, the drawings that uh, are going to represent the boat that I built, will be drawn by myself with my own ideas. And like I say, some of the ideas will come from these sets of plans. Now, let me just show you the other one. This is a Neant dory, which was the standard dory for the U.S. Navy in 1915. And... Uh, Many thousands and thousands of these boats have been built. Now, let me go to the next one here. This is a, a small Swampskit dory that was redrawn from the original lines. Now, the original dory had five planks per side, and this dory here has only got four planks per side. You know, it's the same shape as the older one, but it was designed and uh, drawn so that it could be built with plywood, actually, plywood lap strike. So it's really the the uh, prelude to a, to a kit dory, really, that set of drawings. And, uh, you know, there's things about this dory that I like uh, as well. I like the shear in this dory. You know, I like it that the lowest point of the shear is either right at the middle, or like the first one, the lowest point in the shear is just after center. It's right in here at station three. I kind of like that feature, so I'm going to, you know, like I say, just learning things from looking at these drawings. Now, this is a beachcomber dory, and uh, it's got special features as well. It's got a radically shaped or uh, slanted stem and transom because it really wasn't meant to be sailed. It's an open, I mean, it wasn't meant to be rowed. It's an open dory. It's a sailing, racing dory. So as it heals, it picks up a longer waterline length under sail than you see it right here. That's why they were able to get away with these kind of slants on the ends. And, uh, you know, I've learned quite a bit from this dory. This is a five plank dory. There's all kinds of things I want to show you about the shape of the sides in all of these different dories. And it's a little bit technical, so I just thought I'd kind of reserve that for a little while here. And I'll probably go over some of that when I'm drawing the dory that I want to draw. 
This one's got an eight and a half inch shear, uh, but it's a longer dory. So you can't confuse yourself and steal any of these dimensions and put them in a smaller boat because it would have a eight and a half inches of shear in a shorter boat would have be a radical shear. So, you know, you're just gonna learn things from these is basically all I'm gonna do. Now, this is actually a little dory skiff right here and it's got much larger transom in it. And there's different things, like I said, about the shape of the sides that I'm gonna go over with you. And uh, the thing I do like about this design, it's got quite a rocket bottom in it. So now I'm gonna go after a bottom with a similar rocker as this, but much more sheer than this, you know? And then uh, also I've studied and made drawings and uh, uh, made notes all over these drawings about the angle of the dead rise, the first couple planks that are on the boat and whether the dead rise ri lines up with some of the planks that are in radius at the top side, you know. So, uh, you know, I've drawn in some diagonals on some of the drawings. All kinds of different things have happened here. Now, this one here is obviously made for an outboard motor, so the transom is standing up much taller or much straighter up than some of the other ones, like I said, because it's made to hang an outboard motor on it. Now, I'm not interested in that, and I'm not interested in a transom this size, uh, here is a double-ended dory. Now this is a gunning dory right here. And uh, I'd say the special features on this dory is that it's very low sheared. It does have uh, nine inches of shear in it, but it's a long boat and um, it's wide. It's got a very, very broad uh, uh, bilge turn to it. It has a conservative dead rise in it. But this boat would, might tend to be a little bit tender. It's got 30 degrees of dead rise in it. You know, so like I say, I'm comparing the different dories. This boat is exactly double-ended, except for the height of the stem. So it could be rowed in either direction, but it wasn't meant to be. It has a particular direction. Now here's another double-ended dory. This is a surf dory. Now this boat is identical, the bow and the stern. You can row it in either direction, and uh, it's funny, they actually put the seats in it so you, you can't get confused. You don't know what the bow or the stern is. Now what we have here is a little Swampskit Dory Tender. Now this boat was made for tending large yachts and it was made to carry quite a load for a very small boat. It's got a fairly wide bottom on it actually for a boat this small and it doesn't have much of a shear in it. It's kind of got a low shear in it and now like I say it's a perfect boat for tending. It does row very nicely. It carries tons of weight Anybody with a large yacht would do well to own a boat exactly like this. Now, this boat's only 12 foot 6 inches long. The boat we draw is going to be around 14 feet long. But it's going to have some features like this particular boat right here. One of the things I did want to show you really was, you know, I was always out to try to figure out some way you could describe the shape of a dory. Uh, you know, whether it's in numbers or just in language or something that I've never heard before. And what I've come up with here is a method to describe the center sections of this boat. Now, I kind of figured by looking at any of these plans and by looking at drawings and dories themselves uh, is that the top sides on these boats should be kind of like in a radius. You know, it's not like a parabolic curve. The top planks are in a radius. So I wanted to figure out where the center of that radius would be. The first thing that I actually did was draw a straight line across the top of the boat from the center sections, right straight across. And it just seems like this works out on almost every boat. I drew a quick line right here, right? That's the height of the shear. So on that line, I set a pair of dividers right here that would reach that first planking line at the shear. Now, Look at that. That pair of dividers hits that one too. It hits this one too. And it also hits this one. So there's three planks. It hits four lines. There's three planks in a radius. Now as you go down, you see it doesn't hit that one anymore. That one's in dead rise. It's outside the radius. So what you have on this particular boat right here is a five plank dory. There's two planks in dead rise and three planks in radius. Now, you can describe any one of these dories in the same exact way. Now, here's another one, and it's very similar in some respects, but not the same. 
uh, I've decided the same thing to try to figure out where that radius was and I drew the line from the shear right straight across and I tried to put my set of dividers on that line and find the radius that would hit all of these different planking lines and I couldn't do it. I had to move the center down a little bit from the shear and close it up. It's much tighter of a radius, but look, one, two, three, four. So it has three planks on a radius and two planks in dead rise. Now when I say dead rise, I mean a straight line right here. There's no difference between this plank and this plank. They laid on exactly the same angle and you can describe that angle. This angle is 22 degrees right here. It's got 22 degrees of dead rise. You know, the other boat had 30 degrees of dead rise. So there's that much difference in the two boats. And of course, this is a bigger boat, but we can go again and take one more look at the next one. Now, here's the gunning dory right here. It has some special features like every dory does. This boat is low sheared and the reason for it is to kind of keep it out of the wind if you can because you don't want it to drift too fast in the wind. It makes it a little bit harder for gunning ducks. So like I said, I'm going to study the top sides of this boat, the shape of the center frames as well as all the other ones. But for you guys in the video, I'm just going to show you the center section right here. Now, just like the other ones, I drew a line from the top of the boat right straight across to the other side and tried to use that for reference and uh, basically I couldn't get away with that one either because there's the line right down here and every time I tried to work with this line I couldn't get a, a radius to land on all of these planks so I had to lift the center of the radius up to here and you can see one, two, three and that's it. Because this one, like I said before, is designed to be built in plywood. If it was plank, it would probably hit four of the lines and uh, have three planks in radius. But like I said, this one's made for plywood. So I've learned a little bit from it. And uh, let's go on to the next one. Now this is the little dory skiff right here. And I've studied all the sections in this, just like all the other boats. And uh, I found out that this one's a little bit different even. I drew a line across from the shear right straight across. You see it's got the same section on this side that it does on this side, which is kind of neat the way they drew it in section here. Uh, it allowed me to be able to find out what flat actually is very easily. And I've drawn the line across and then I set my dividers on that line. And uh, basically, no matter what I did, I couldn't seem to come up with exactly uh, the right spacing to hit all four of these exactly right. So what I did was I raised the center above the shear a little bit and uh, I've adjusted it in length so that it touches the shear here, the next plank line, next plank line, and the next plank line. So now it falls off like this, you see, and there's a space between here and here. So this boat has three planks in radius and then it especially different than the other ones, it has two planks right here in dead rise, but the third plank lines up with these two planks. So it really has three planks in radius and three planks in dead rise. It's got a steep dead rise. It's not something I'm interested. I don't think they look that great like that. So there's a little background on the shape of some of these round sided dories and how I've determined what shape they actually are. Now, I'm going to go into this quite a bit more because there's a lot more to say about these dories. So if they were used in the surf, they would have different shapes, waterline shapes and different things like that. I'm going to go into all of that, like I said, and uh, I'm going to draw a uniquely shaped, my own dory on the drawing board right behind us right here. That's up next and we're going to be doing a few other videos to kind of fill in until these videos get released. We're working on a little Harrishoff sailboat right over here. I've got a little V-bottom model right here in front of me of a V-bottom skiff that I designed that's become uh, very interesting to a lot of people. I think I've got a couple of orders for these V-bottom skiffs. They're 23 feet long, so we're going to get to that. But the next thing, like I said, is to build this dory. It's going to be the total boat dory. It is going to be unique, never mind in its design, but in its construction, and we can't wait to get started.